Hello, this is part three of my 23 or so part Castlevania review, focusing on, coincidentally, Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse. This game really feels like a, a remake of uh, Cas the original Castlevania, simply because even though you're playing as a different Belmont, his, control, he, his controls are the same as... Uh, Simon Belmont. It just had it has the same basic story despite taking place three centuries earlier. It was originally the meant to be the beginning of the Castlevania series. Uh, history. This game came out in 1989 in Japan and 1990 in America. Now I mentioned the Japanese release because of all the significant differences that exist in the Japanese release, which I'll try to get into later. Um, the North American release not only has inferior music, it is also subject to a few mistranslations. My favorite being that when you get the wizard, uh, Sofa Belenese, who is a woman, as you can clearly see in the, in one of the endings, they refer to her, they go, will you take him with you, which led to uh, some fun, pretty funny jokes. Um, besides the wizard, who is a lot better than I remember her, you also get the um, the very agile Grant Nasty who can Grant the Nasty who can uh, hang from walls and use that to his advantage. Um, and finally, you get to play the superlative Alucard who would go on to star in the superlative Symphony of the Night. Um, the funny thing about Alucard is it's really just an in joke. His name is just Dracula's name spelled backwards. His actual name is Adrian Fahrenheit Tepps. And I really wish they would. Uh, Reconoid something to recognize that as his official name because I feel it's so much cooler. Another example would be Trevor's name in the Japanese version is Ralph C. Belmont. And now I don't think anyone calls him Ralph C. Belmont, so why can't we do the same with Alucard? Um, I was flipping through uh, the page, the book that came with the uh, 20th anniversary edition, deluxe edition of Portrait of Ruin, if you pre order, and I found this neat picture. As a follow-up to that photo you just saw, here's another uh, official timeline that came with the deluxe edition of Portrait of Ruin. I myself had forgotten about this, so I thought uh, fans of the game might be well interested to hear what Konami themselves have to say officially about Dracula's Curse. 1476, Castlevania Dracula's Curse. The genocide of humanity begins at the hands of Count Dracula. Alerted to Dracula's existence, a secret team is sent in by the Eastern Church to find and defeat him. But all attempts to suppress Dracula end in failure. Faced with no other options, the church turns to the vampire hunters, the Belmont clan, to pursue and defeat Dracula. With the hunt underway, a showdown is imminent. Matthias changes his name to Vlad Tepes and continues to live on for hundreds of years. Trevor Belmont, the pirate Grant, the cleric Sifid, and Alucard, the son of Dracula, join forces and succeed in overthrowing Dracula. Sifid then takes... <laughs> Trevor's hand in marriage, while Alucard, pain from his finding his own father, submerges into an eternal sleep. I think the point about uh, the church turning to uh, Trevor Belmont is interesting because if you played Lament of Innocence, which I'll review later, they don't have such a cozy relationship, so it's nice that even if this is reconnoited chronology, they did a pretty good job tying it together. On to uh, the history of the game, on to uh, the graphics of the game. This game really feels like it stretches the, SNE, uh, the NES to its limit. It's seen, the mo movement, the graphics, the sound, everything is so much... seems like it's more fluid than its predecessors. There's more animation in the characters and the enemies, and they were able to even implement some uh, niggling... Uh, 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 they were able to implement uh, some solutions to niggling problems like the inability to move in midair, which Grant, uh, the pirate, can now do. He can only, I had forgotten this, he can not only jump high, but he can actually move in midair too. Um, but as I said, playing this game, uh, again, I realized how awesome uh, the, the wizard Sifa Belenese is. Her magic just totally obliterates the enemies. You can be across the screen, and if you use the homing lightning balls I think they are most of them do about three damage per hit and they can hit up to, they can hit several times if you have a good amount of life and just keep and a hearts and just keep throwing at them you'll defeat the boss well before they might even be able to get close enough to hit you even the harder bosses like Dracula and death go down in no time to this thing it's awesome and I can't believe I didn't know about it before maybe it was because she takes a lot of damage that I just thought but 
you're not gonna have to worry about damage if you're nowhere near the enemies. Um, it's also important to note uh, the Japanese version of this game because it had an extra sound chip to make the music superior, which I intend to show in my clearest example at the end of the clip. It also had a few other differences. Uh, Grant, his, uh, his weapon in the American version is incredibly weak. It's just a standard stabbing dagger. And he not only does very little damage, you have to be very close. In the Japanese version, he actually throws daggers as, as his weapon, which makes similar to Sylphie, uh, Sniffit, whatever her name is, um, him to defeat bosses uh, from long distance. One of my favorite things to do is on the uh, sunken ship of souls, I think it's called, is you hang to the wall, grow, uh, crawl up above Medusa and throw rain daggers down on her. It's awesome. It's kind of, kind of almost like a prelude to uh, Richter's item crash of the same thing. Uh, sound. Uh, another thing about the Japanese version, it had a special sound chip to enhance the music, and that was the ROM I specifically played for this version, because I wanted to hear all the little dis differences, and it's not only clearer and more well, and more defined the sound, it really feels like a different type of composition, like they had to rewrite it for the American version. It's really... I pretty much gave the story there, so there really is no re other reason I feel to play the American version. Unless, of course, you like those translation errors that I noted earlier. Um, challenge. This game is definitely the most challenging of the, cas of the NES Castlevanias because there's so many bosses and so many more stages. And even though I was discovering, even though I discovered those recent facts with the wizard, the game is still relies a lot on uh, pattern memorization and skill. Um, Dracula is definitely the hardest one, besides maybe Rondo of Blood, simply because he does a good, pretty good job at covering most of the screen. You have to be agile when trying to dodge his attacks. Death isn't as hard as he was in the first game in this one, and simply because, as I mentioned with Sylphie, and you can just obliterate them. Um, fun factor... I had fun with this the first time I played this game when I was about nine years old, even though I wasn't able to beat it. I think I got up to Frankenstein on the easy path, so that was like the, um, I think that's the seventh stage, and I just never could get any further than that. I'm not sure if my NES had crapped out by then. I'm not really sure if that's what came from storing games improperly, it scared me away from cartridges for a while. Or I don't think I ever tried to go along that path. I was always trying to go on the hard one because I liked Alucard so much. Um, the later levels really get more difficult as you go because in the that's the other thing to note. In the NES version, enemies start taking more and more damage at uh, more and more damage away from you as you go, whereas in the Japanese version, it stays constant. Whatever they do to you at the beginning stays the same at the end, like the Medusa heads. But everything is changing, so it makes it a little bit easier. And also do the fact that when you die in the Japanese version, you'll you'll begin at the foot of Dracula stairs, that iconic st staircase, as opposed to the whole beginning of area B one, I believe it is, in the American version. So it can take you a little time. Reminds me of having to play all the Ninja Gaiden games, if you know what I mean. Um, my final thoughts on this game. I really hope it gets released on the virtual console soon because I'd love to be able to uh, find a way to download the Japanese ROM of it. I understand that's easier than it might be po than in, than uh, you might think it is. I think it just involves uh, changing region codes or something like that. I believe someone had done it for uh, the Fire Emblem games. Um, I also wanted to uh, point out that this is an important watershed game in the Castlevania Castlevania games not because not only because it spawned a direct sequel not only uh, two years ago in Curse of Darkness but of all the iconic characters that were introduced and referred to and paid homage to in later games it really felt like the total package ga Castlevania game it was like Castlevania it's awesomeness in fact the opening letter right here from the producer Mr. Igarashi um Castlevania Symphony of the Night was my first participation with Castlevania, but I would have to say that Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse, is my favorite Castlevania title of all time. What I love best about all this one is the composition of getting a feeling of thoughtfulness over the storyline and characters with only a handshake. Like, that that's sums up the game very well. 
I'll see you uh, next time for part five, four, which uh, I believe I'll be starting on the Game Boy Castle pages.